Hello, my fellow masochists, and welcome back to another episode of Person Who Says He Hates Everything You Stand For Demonstrates That He Hates Everything You Stand For. Uh, t today, we've gotten to, as you can tell, I'm in a very bright and cheerful mood. This new pattern of every other day really helps. Uh, but I think we're just going to jump straight into this new chapter. This surah is titled The Prophets, which, as I'm sure I am... So I'm sure, I mean, I, I, I already, I saw the first, the first ayah, uh, the first line, and already I'm giddy with excitement. So let's just jump into it. <clears throat> A Meccan surah which takes its name from the list of prophets mentioned from verse 48 to verse 91. It stresses the fact that Muhammad is a man like earlier prophets and has been given the same message to declare the unity of God. It warns the disbelievers of the approaching judgment from which there is no escape. Um, hilarious. Uh, let's let's jump straight in. <clears throat> so, the time of people's judgment has drawn near, yet they are heedlessly turning away. Oh, they will not heed your warnings. Oh no! Whatever new reminder comes to them from their Lord, they only listen at it jokingly. <laughs> I feel personally attacked. Oh <laughs> uh, no, it's it's funny to me how how um, most cons are very good at phrasing. Oh, there will be so many people who, who reject your your teachings. So many people who don't who just don't know how. To, are they they're just they're just closed minded? Are they just like um. What's it called? Um, like Trump supporters have, uh, uh, like it's when we start using like labels for people who disagree with us. Like Trump supporters have this sort of never Trumpers and uh, no t Trump derangement syndrome. They have like literally have a word for people who reject their beliefs because there's they've sort of trained themselves and been brought up so much like this uh, on this feast of. Well, anyone who disagrees with my God, be it Trump or whoever, or God, uh, whoever disagrees with me on my view of reality, he he must ha just be simply closed-minded. He must simply just have something wrong with him. There's simply something wrong with his point of view. Um, but yeah, this is exactly accurate. We do only listen to it jokingly. Uh, that is exactly what I'm doing. I'm only listening jokingly. Oh, it's it's. I'm so glad that finally the text acknowledges my existence properly instead of just because most of the time it's talking about these disbelievers these pagans these people who take other gods apart from god and i'm literally just sitting here i think everything you've said so far is silly and ridiculous and all like this this note that i was like a little bit stressed in the beginning like all of these people apparently all of these muslims coming to my channel being like eagerly like oh at least you're looking for the truth and i'm like no no that's not that's not what's happening here that's, that's, you've caught me not doing that. You've caught me reading something I think is ridiculous and thinking it's ridiculous. Uh, it is exactly like reading comedy. Uh, I, well, an unintentional comedy. It's like watching fail compilations. <clears throat> but yeah, we only listen to it jokingly with our hearts totally distracted. The evildoers would converse secretly, saying, Is this one not human like yourselves? Would you fall for this witchcraft, even though you can clearly see? Yeah, exactly. That's what we're saying. Um, the prophet responded, My lord fully knows every word spoken in the heavens and the earth, for he is all hearing and all knowing. Oh, good. That has absolutely nothing to do with anything. Yet they... <laughs> okay. Let's <laughs> react. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let, let me translate language or translate the understanding of arguments because this isn't a language thing. This is an understanding of how rhetoric works, how reasoning works. Um, like maybe I'm not an expert on uh, on Arabic, but I, I probably have more uh, education in reasoning uh, than most. And um, the argument here is why. Why trust Muhammad? Cannot any well, aren't words cheap? Can you, he is he not showing is he showing you something which you haven't seen before? Is this world any different? Has he demonstrated any change? No. Muhammad is just another person saying just another God. 
uh, is telling you to do just another set of things. There were many different people who did this, whether they were the Romans or the pagans of the Arabic Peninsula, whether they were the Christians or the Jews, who sort of Moses is, no, Muhammad is like, oh, we're, we're in the same boat, this is the same God, even though those groups very clearly disagreed with him on what God wanted. Like, it's just another person coming and telling you, I know what God wants from you. And, I, and we say, well, who are you to say what God wants? Who are you to tell us that what God wants? Who are you to say, to claim this special privileged knowledge? Who are you to claim that God chose you as a messenger? Who are you? But some other man, some other would-be prophet, some other power-hungry dictator who simply wants to invent fictions to control us. That is what the argument is about. And the answer is, my Lord fully knows every word spoken in the heavens and the earth, for he is all hearing and all knowing. The answer to, well, Muhammad is just another man, is my God is the special powerful God. I speak with the voice of God. It's reiterating this delusional nonsense, this rhetorical trick meant to subjugate the people who are unwilling or unable to think for themselves. Um, the statement is simply, my Lord is mighty. Well, I don't believe you, and nobody should. Yet they say, this Quran is a set of confused dreams. Fair enough. No, he has fabricated it. No, he must be a poet. So let him bring us a tangible sign like the prophet. So these are three points, by the way. These are three separate points. I understand that maybe when it sounds like you're arguing with atheists, it sounds like we're jumping between different points. The point we're trying to make isn't that definitely, actually, Muhammad was a lying, manipulative sociopath, or he was definitely this thoughtful, uh, prof or this thoughtful philosopher who who saw things and understood things in a way that we hadn't done before. Like these are alternate, competing hypotheses. But the point we're trying to make is that there are many of these. There are many of these competing hypotheses, competing interpretations, where it is entirely possible we would get exactly the same amount of evidence, exactly the same type of Quran, all because we have, uh, all, and all we're trying to say isn't that our interpretation of what actually happened is the true one, but that there are more interpretations, more non-divine interpretations of what happened that are more plausible than the divine one. Uh, so these are some of them. Maybe maybe the Quran was just a set of confused dreams. Maybe he's a schizophrenic. Maybe Muhammad was a schizophrenic, like I think most prophets were. Uh, maybe he was fabricating it. Maybe he was a liar. Maybe he was a tyrant. Maybe he was talking to Iblis. Maybe somebody manipulated him, or maybe he manipulated everyone else. Um, these are competing theories, but both valid non-divine origins for uh, the Quran. No, he must be a poet, indeed. Maybe the beauty of it is, like, because this is one of the things which is referenced most often as proof, is the sort of poetic beauty of it, referencing Muhammad's illiteracy, as if that's somehow re interesting, as if illiterate people never did uh, made any beautiful poetry, when they absolutely did. That's how most storytelling happened for most of human history. Uh, so these are, like, these interpretations of, well, maybe he was... Maybe he was confused. Maybe he was a madman. Maybe he was um, a liar. Maybe he was a poet. A madman, a liar, and a poet. These are all competing different interpretations, different non-divine interpretations. And what we need in order to actually believe that this is in any way divinely inspired is we need to not have those available to us. We need there to be no... Uh, such explanation, no such non-divine explanation. Now, sorry, uh, my window is open, so I need to close that very quickly. It's too cold, too cold in here. <clears throat> so yeah, that I like this. I like that we're actually seeing the arguments. But yeah, not a single society we destroyed before them ever believed after receiving the signs. Will these pagans then believe? There are two two things which are wrong about this. First of all, they did believe. Like based on the words from the Quran, 
they did believe after you destroyed after you destroyed them uh after god destroyed them they believed they were like oh my god how wrong we were i now i regret now i truly regret that's a that was a big part of the rhetoric of the earlier passages was <laughs> well all of these people will eventually agree with us all of these people will eventually realize that we were spoken the truth here they say no they won't uh they did never ever believed they not a single society ever believed after receiving the signs oh is he say, or maybe that's the point maybe he's saying well actually we showed them all of these miracles and they never never believed oh, i'm so upset at humans <laughs> like like this petulant angry stupid god who doesn't actually know how to talk to humans like it makes a lot of sense if god is is like a parent like a parent of the past who doesn't who's like incompetent like a parent like like i noticed the last one i've had better parents i've had better people better teachers in my life than this god uh who actually have more understanding and more capacity for like changing how they talk to you and changing how they inspire you to changing how they uh, sort of show you the truth Whereas God simply says, well, we tried this one way and it didn't work. And we tried it again and again and never worked. So we're going to go ahead and say that they're ne never going to get like. I'm sure God knows exactly like I don't need to know exactly what the true solution is. All I need to know is that God is not giving us a good explanation. We have better explanations that don't include God. They include uh, madman, liar, poet. These explanations are perfectly reasonable. If God can give us some sign which could not be given by a madman, a liar, or a poet, then by all means, we will believe. But if God's response to this accusation, to this criticism, to this problem of knowledge, this problem of, of in inherent doubt, this problem in the fallibility of the human mind, if God simply cannot address the problem of the fallibility of the human mind, then why on earth? earth call him god clearly this kind of god isn't smart isn't intent clearly this is iblis because clearly this is some madman insisting that humans not behave or mad demon insisting that humans not behave the way that humans feel S insisting that humans reject our nature reject understanding our ignorance that's what we're being told here is being told well no, we know none of us believed or none of the past people believed after dis receiving the signs and also we destroyed them because we didn't like will these pagans then believe no. <sighs> maybe if you had given them convincing signs what i take from this isn't that you gave them everything and still they did not believe but that you gave them insufficiently it is it's kind of weird because it sure I get that like the Muslim interpretation is sort of axiomatically to assume that God knows best and everything God does is the best thing and even if we don't understand it and it's still still the, the thing is God knows best and whatever God did like why why not actually engage your critical thinking and ask yourself did God do best here because if you do that and you ask yourself that then you soon realize that well, actually, this this God is acting in ways that don't make a lot of sense. And it's very hard to interpret these actions in the context of a kind, caring uh, teacher who tries to guide us to be moral, decent human beings. But it's very easy to explain it in terms of madman nature, unthinking, unfeeling, unflinching, uncaring nature, just forces, laws of the universe, laws of mechanics that just happen. Um, and don't care about our happiness so no no we will not then believe because you didn't really very much doubt that god this god at least knows how to give signs that are convincing we did not send messengers before you prophet except mere men inspired by us if you polytheists do not know this already then ask those who have knowledge of the scriptures <laughs> Now, I do not know this and ask who have knowledge of the scriptures, people who claim this delusional belief is actually valid. People who all this weirdness of implicitly implying that that having knowledge is the same as believing. It's it's 
obvious nonsense word games. Um, and it's tragic, really. Ah, I mean, I'm, I'm spending too much time, honestly, at the beginning today. Let's let's move on a little bit, a little bit more pace today. We did not give these messengers supernatural bodies that did not need food, nor were they immortal. It's not what the argument is about. Then we fulfilled our promises to them, say, saving them along with whoever we willed and destroying the transgressors. We have surely revealed to you a book in which there is a glory for you. Will you not then understand? We have surely... No. No, we will not. We need actual evidence. Not... Well, these people believed they were saved by God. Many of the people who died thought they were going to be saved by God. That's how evidence works. You take the contradictory evidence as well. You don't just go, well, this, like, yeah, have you seen the, there's a, if Google was a person, there's a great skit. And then this woman comes in and asks, uh, vaccines cause autism. That's what her Google search is. And the Google guy says, well, here I have this massive stack of papers that say it doesn't and I have this one result that says it does. And she grabs this one result and says, I knew it. This very much feels like what it's happening to me here. Like the vast majority of people who died were just as convinced that they were doing the morally righteous thing, that they were following God, that they had the signs, that their ancestors had been shown signs, and it would be so folly of them not to listen, that their ancestors had been, like, or indeed that their ancestors had been shown, like, shown by angels, not necessarily just by humans. Like, there's so many different interpretations, and just saying, well, actually, no, this is true. And this people who believe it's true will tell you it's true. That's so tragically far away from evidence that it's not really worth addressing. <sighs> In which there is glory for you. Hmm. Yeah, <laughs> will you not that? I mean, that's also kind of funny. In which there is glory for you. Will you not then understand if I glorify you? Imagine how many societies of wrongdoers we have destroyed, raising up other people after them. Imagine how many societies of right doers you have destroyed, of good people, moral, God-fearing people you have destroyed. The vast majority of the people that God has destroyed, that nature has destroyed, were good people who feared God and who thought they were doing the best by God. The earthquake in Lisbon very good example of this because you have the, the problem isn't just human evil the problem is natural evil the problem is that places which are very devout were punished more than places which were very hedonistic very secular very atheistic very d debauched like why lisbon why not paris or london paris or london great loads of filthy de people debauched people people like me running around but no, 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 God, God broke Lisbon, one of the most Catholic, one of the most religious cities in the world. God simply does not care very much if, he, if we interpret it as this kind of God. If there is a thinking, theistic God, then he seems to only reward people who are secular, who do not think about God very much, who engage with reality, engage with nature, as a thing to be understood, as a mechanism, as a machine to be interacted with and played with in such a way to gain the results they want. Whereas the people who insist that it is God and insist that their prayers help, these are the people who only get satisfaction in their own hearts, in their own souls, their own feeling of contentment that they are living a life of purpose and meaning. That's the only thing you get. You don't get anything outside of yourself, uh, tragically. When the wrongdoers sensed the arrival of our torment, they started to run away from their cities. Yeah, like if you see a, an earthquake in Lisbon, you start to run away. They were told, do not run away. Return to your luxuries and your homes so you may be questioned about your fate. Literally, your house is falling down. No, no, return to it. <laughs> this is very much the, the bitter voice of somebody who's been very upset that other people have lived in luxury their whole lives. And I'm like, no, no, now you have to go back to your luxury. You made your own bed. I'm like, my bed included running away from my bed when it got uncomfortable. They cried, woe to us. We have surely been wrongdoers. Yeah, we've surely... I mean, this is a useful way of thinking too. Like if you... Um, 
if you think, uh, if you always blame yourself, it's a very useful trick I've noticed. Is you, if you want to improve at something, like uh, people complain to me. I have a lot of my friends play a lot of League of Legends. I don't really like League of Legends, or I play all around the mall mid sometimes to be social. But they like they complain a lot about the sort of ELO hell and the sort of how they um, how they're dragged down by their peers uh, and, and sort of every time they lose, they think, oh no, it was just this was a problem not me somebody else on my team was a problem but if you ask yourself all of the time what have i done wrong then you become more better at sort of fixing that so in the context of uh, nature like we have been wrongdoers what have we done wrong well we didn't build uh, homes that were protected from earthquakes that's something you did wrong in the context here it means oh well we did evil so therefore god punished us if you think like that, then God is capricious, cruel, and merciless, and awful being who only pu who punishes the people who believe in them the most. But if you think about it in the context of what did we do wrong, like what should we do in the future that we didn't do this time, then it's fairly decent. Um, so maybe maybe that's what's meant by wrongdoers. Maybe all of the other times I've been reading wrongdoers, it's not actually about ethics. It's not actually about morality. It's about sort of pragmatism utilitarian uh, i mean that's about morality but sort of a, a pragmatic you basis on 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 utilitarian more colloquial sense of making use of what you have um, yeah let's assume that let's be nice today they kept repeating their cry until we mowed them down leaving them life burnt them inside their home is what i hear her Oh yeah, now now we're getting at the whole. Oh, this is a religion of war. I remember now. I remember now the religion of war, where they mowed them down, leaving them lifeless. Obviously, it's God mowed them down, leaving them lifeless. Uh, they were told, "Do not run away. Do not run away. Do not flee. Do not protect yourself." <sighs> we did not create the heavens and the earth and everything in between for sport. Well, okay. I mean, even if you say you didn't, you clearly did. Like, I guess maybe like for the fun of it in some. I mean, that's what I interpret for sport, like for the for the sake of enjoyment. Uh, we tend intended to take some amusement. We could have found it in our presence if that had been our will. <laughs> well, I could have done everything. So why would I make you if, like? That, that makes no sense. Well, God is almighty, so why would he have made us? He could have just entertained himself some other way. Well, that's kind of the point. You want, if God genuinely wanted the sport of this in its in and of itself, then he would have, he would have needed to make us. Like the only way of getting exactly this kind of amusement is by doing exactly this kind of thing. He could have found it in his own presence, sure, but he could have made us all in his own presence and watched us run around exactly as headlessly and ruthlessly killing each other in his name, pretending that our delusions about our own morality are actually God-given. In fact, we hurl the truth against falsehood, leaving it crushed and quickly, and it quickly vanishes. And woe be to you what you claim. Yeah, yeah, about the, the polytheists, has a partner and children, whatever. Um, Pearl leaving it, woe be to you. What I claim, not this little note about partners, what I claim is there is no God. It's not, you, you end the sentence earlier. There is not, there is no God but God. There is no God. End the sentence there. <clears throat> and woe be to me for what I claim, for claiming that your, your truth has no power. Your truth is made of paper. Your truth is made of words. Your truth is simply a construction, a, a house of cards. You try and hurl this truth at our falsehoods all the time, but our falsehoods tend to endure a little bit more than this nonsense. To him belong all these, all those in the heavens and the earth, and those nearest to him are not too proud to worship him, nor do they tire. They glorify him day and night, never wavering. Those nearest are not too proud to worship him. <laughs> It's such a weird, like like what I just said about it being a whole language game. They're not too proud to worship. 
but God is too proud. I, this is why I like Jesus. Like I'm, I'm all, I don't want, I don't like magical thinking, but the, one of the cool things about Jesus was he was like, I'm going to wash your feet. I'm going to show myself. I'm going to serve you. I want you to understand that I'm here to like, like with a good parent who like ties your shoelaces, who like helps you get up when you get hurt. Like with the people like kind, generous creatures, kind, generous masters who actually love you and actually care for you and actually want the best for you. These people in our lives treat us better than this God does. Uh, and so, yeah, it makes sense if it's an abuse of God, but it doesn't really make sense if it's a kind one. Um, because God is too proud to worship us. In the same way that our parents worship us. Our parents do genuinely are not too proud to worship us. But God is. God demands that we all think of him as the most important, biggest, most powerful daddy that ever lived. My parents were not so vain. My gods were not so vain. No point in my life were my gods so full of themselves, so narcissistic. But they have, these worshippers, they glorify him day and night, never wavering. They glorify him. Or have they taken gods from the earth who can raise the dead? Have they, as in the people who glorify him? Or is he just changing nouns for no reason? Had there been other gods beside God in the heavens or the earth, both realms would surely have been corrupted. What? Of, uh, what? Have we any evidence that it wasn't? So glorified is God, Lord of the throne, far above what they claim. My God is greater than what you think it is. My <laughs> mental image in my head is too good for it not to be real. <laughs> my delusions are too good for them not to be real. <laughs> He cannot be questioned about what he does, but they will all be questioned. He cannot be like even trying to even critical thinking at all. Nope, that's not, he cannot be. It's impossible. It's not permitted. Not critical thinking is banned. Critical thinking is banned. Literally, word for word, he cannot be questioned about what he does. Critical thinking is banned. You're not allowed to think critically about what God does. Nope, that's not that's not permissible. Not permissible. And it's just how fascinating that people are proud of this. Or have they taken other gods besides him? Say, O Prophet, show me your proof. Here is the Quran, the reminder for those with me, along with earlier scriptures, the reminder for those before me. But most of them do not know the truth, so they turn away. Yeah, that's why we turn away. Because you're <laughs> show me your proof, and you go, I has book. I has book, you know, I has book. And the book uh, kind of says what the earlier prophets said, but also it says that those earlier prophets were corrupted and that this book is the only uncorrupted piece of work. <laughs> the proof is both in that it is confirmed by other scriptures, but if it's contradicted by other scriptures, then that's not disproving it. Uh, all of the evidence that might kind of maybe support your belief, those are good evidence. All the evidence that might kind of contradict your belief, uh, no, 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 that doesn't work. That's not actual real evidence. Um, but indeed, most most of you don't know the truth, so you turn away. Most of you seem not not willing, like seem to have taken this very much to heart. Uh, the idea that critical thinking is not something you're supposed to do with religion. Uh, but as tragic as it is, I mean that that's yeah. It, it's fun because it, like meta thinking here, like taking a step back and being a little bit reflective and a little bit sort of candid, it really reminds, it like it gives me a really good sort of insight into why cults work. Because it has the sort of peer pressure element, it has the sort of community building element and or like all of these people showing that they're so sort of welcoming and open and uh, you can be like yourself with us and we can all be together. As w weird things that I don't like and don't appeal to me, uh, which is probably like probably why I'm safe from cults, despite sort of being a, a reclusive loner. Uh, I mean, I guess that's why I'm a reclusive loner. But but this sort of feeling of 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 using language to to sort of imply that it is impossible to think certain thoughts or to make it impossible to think certain thoughts by the way you phrase things. 
by sort of phrasing it as the reminder. This is the reminder of the truth. Like it's not proof. I would like it's it is proof. Here it's sort of used as proof. But like, what is the proof? What is the reasoning of the proof? Well, it's a reminder of of the earlier scriptures. And I'm like, okay, let's dissect this and and analyze it. And what seems to be sort of the problem is for me, it's very easy to just change words around and sort of use positive and negative connotations and neutral connotations and just flip around words and use synonyms and chase uh, in place of synonyms. Uh, but cults don't like that. That doesn't work for cults. Cults need you to think in the way that they tell you to think. And only in that way can its thinking permit it. Uh, so, hmm. Ah, just a fascinating, fascinating feeling. Maybe, yeah, maybe I should make my own cult. That would be fun. With blackjack and hookers. Um... We never sent a messenger before you, O prophet, without revealing to him there is no God worthy of go worship except me, so worship me alone. We never sent a messenger without revealing to him, and this is sort of proof of itself. Like, if I were, to, like, sure, if I believe that it is true that there was never a messenger sent before anyone, that there is no God, like, if I believe that there is no God worthy of worship except God, then then yeah, sure, I might believe this, and this might be proof, but only if I already accept the conclusion. Like, this is where the sort of cultish thinking comes in. It's this very, like, in, in formal logic, you'd call it circular reasoning. Like, it all makes sense if you already accept the conclusion, if you already believe all of the things that the, the Quran is about, all of the sort of the truth of God and the truth that God is, requires all of this from you, the truth that this is the word of God, then if you accept all of these things, then it, ah, then you're going, ah, it makes sense that this is the word of God because of the, this and this and that. But if you don't, if you start out with this like, well, I'm not sure if it doesn't make sense. I'm not sure that it does. I don't think that it does. It doesn't seem to me to do. If you start without accepting this premise, then none of it is evidence. And that's the problem. Like, what would you need to show us? Well, something that is true, that is demonstrable and convincing, even if you don't already believe. Something that is convincing to people who don't already believe. That's what we're interested in. Tragically. Oh, well. And they say the most compassionate has offspring. Oh, I know they do. Yeah, yeah, we've read that 17 times so far. Glory be to him. In fact, those angels are only his honored servants who do not speak until he has spoken, only acting at his command. Yeah, but like how, how, like you're saying this as a different interpretation and that's fine. That's valid. Like when it comes to me, like determining between different types of magical thinking, I, I, I make no distinction between the pagans, uh, pagan nonsense and Muslim nonsense. All of these are equally, equally absurd in my mind. But, but sort of, but yeah, actually to get to that, why is this taken? Uh, why is this sort of a criticism of the statement, the most compassionate at offering? It's only sort of stating the rejection of it. It is stating to be stating that no no i interpret it not as his offspring but as as his honored servants but they interpret it as his offspring who's right well i i i know that only god god has spoken to me and he says that uh they're wrong right like that that's what's proof is it's like well trust me that's eventually what the truth is well trust me well trust me muhammad is eventually going well trust me you should trust that i have seen the truth Because how do we know? How do we know? And also we know that Iblis doesn't always act on his command. But let's go on. He fully knows what is ahead of them and what is behind them. They do not intercede except for whom he approves. And they tremble in awe of him. Whoever of them were to say, I am God beside him, they would be rewarded with hell by us. This is how we reward the wrongdoers. Uh, I am a God beside I can if somebody says that, poor, poor, poor fool. How would you, what, like, let's, let's take a moment here to really realize what's being said here. If a madman claims to be God, then they will be rewarded with hell for being mentally ill. Oh my God, how tragic. 
And that's also why mentally ill people don't realize that they're mentally ill. Like, you have these people who, like the Messiah complex, people who genuinely believe they're Jesus. And they genuinely believe they're God. And they genuinely believe they're here for this purpose. And they genuinely believe that if they were lying about this, they were would be going to hell. Like, they, you, I've heard stories about people trying to actually get these people to interact and talk to each other. And they, they condemn each other as heretics sometimes. Not always. Sometimes they weirdly end up cooperating in these weird, fascinating ways. Um, but that's not sort of the point here is this... This could have been said by a madman just as well as it could have been said by a madman, a liar, or a poet. Nothing that's been said so far today. I'm going to take less breaks now. I've realized we've, we've got the madman, liar, poet. That's the test. Could any of these things have been said by a madman, liar, or a poet? If so, not good evidence. So let's go on. Do the disbelievers not realize that the heavens and earth were once one mass, then we split them apart? We created from water every living thing. Will they not then believe? Poet. And we have placed firm mountains upon the earth so it does not shake with them and made it in broad pathways so they may find their way. Poet. We have made the sky a well-protected canopy. Still, they turn away from its science. Okay, let's read that after because this is, again, poet. Um, signs of the heaven include galaxy planets, stars, etc., all of which have an orbit. Planets orbit the sun, so no, okay. A well-protected canopy. I, I remember reading it in another... Yeah. Yeah, It's this is this footnote should be for this one. And he is the one who created the day and night, the sun and moon, and each traveling in an orbit. Orbis, as in going around. Orbis, meaning sphere. Um, yeah. Spheres are, are funny. again, this shouldn't, note shouldn't be here because this has nothing to do with that. Sun and the moon in traveling. Uh, interestingly, as a note, uh, the confusion between day and night, uh, the association day and night, sun, moon thing, uh, is sort of implied that the moon is, is the light for the night and the, the moon, it doesn't always only come out during the night. It also comes out during the day. Depending on its orbit at the time. Uh, but yeah. Good. Poet, I suppose. We have not granted immortality to any human being before you. So if you die, will they live forever? Liar. Every soul will taste death. And we test you, O oh humanity, with good and evil as a trial, then to show us you will all be returned. We test you with good and evil as a trial, then to us you will all be returned. Yeah, that's typically normal religious stuff. I want to say liar again, but that's typical nor uh, religious nonsense. When the disbelievers see you, prophet, they make f only make fun of you, saying, Is this the one who speaks ill of your gods? While they disbelieve at the mention of the most compassionate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Humankind is made of haste. I will soon so show you my signs, so do not ask me to hasten them. Liar. Uh, uh, let's take a note here. Or why I'm referencing liar, why I'm using liar, poet, and madman in different contexts. Um, this sort of is a rhetorical device. This is a trick, a trick for convincing people. Like, I will soon show you the signs. Don't ask me to hasten them. Don't ask me for proof. You will soon have your proof. Like, you will have your proof soon, TM, right? It's, it's, it's what you'd say if you don't have proof, if you can't prove the things, if you don't, if you're frustrated by your inability to convince other people, then you say this. Uh, if they don't, just won't, don't, won't believe in you. So that's why I'm using the phrase liar. They ask the believers, when will this threat come to pass if you, what you say is true? Yeah, like soon, TM. If only the disbelievers knew what, that a time will come when they will not be able to keep the fire off their faces or backs, nor will they be helped. If only we knew, indeed. If only you knew, and this wasn't simply a madman's invention. Like... Madman, yeah, this is this is where you get madman. He was, but he was all three. 
He was a madman, a liar, and a poet. A person with a poetic mind who could see things figuratively. A person who was clearly suffering from visions, uh, delusions, as I would call them. Uh, dreams, fever dreams. Uh, and also somebody who was so convinced of his own fever dreams that he had to persuade other people. Uh, not even just persuade, get them to do as he said. Uh, regardless of, like, the the accuracy of it like it's i'm not sure how to make a good non-personal example of this but there are very many times in your life where you will be faced with things which you are absolutely certain of which are wrong and understanding that your feeling of certainty isn't a good metric for truth uh, is a this is a good warm-up for that because Muhammad's feeling of certainty was also not a good metric for truth. Uh, and let's like let's even think about this in the context of there is an actual God and I actually spoke to Muhammad. Even Muhammad's certainty in his in the, the scrap of truth he's given, the the mere shadow, the mere sort of single thread of God's magnificence that we get exposed through any of the prophets. Even the single thread is so is so much that it completely fills uh, us fallible humans to the brim with this certain knowledge this certain knowledge of god but there is so much more to god we have only seen this tiny this corner of of his shirt that's all we've seen of the whole of the glory of god and even in this context like this certainty this feeling that i certainly know the truth is a delusion uh, it is simply a shortcut for, well, the whole of the thing is really too hard for me to comprehend. So, but the part of the thing, I can understand the part of the thing. It's just when you start extrapolating from the part of the thing, we have a problem. But I will. <sighs> so yeah, madman. In fact, the hour will take them by surprise, leaving them stunned. So they will not be able to avert it, nor will it be delayed from them. Kind of interesting, because it might it might be a reference to when you die, it's always sudden, right? Uh, sorry about the noise. My neighbor decided to do something right now, apparently. Um, but yeah, like uh, everyone who... Uh, wow, what a noise. Uh, everyone who, um, who do, like whenever we die, it'll always be sort of a suddenness. Uh, we, but on the flip side, we, there are a lot of situations where you are able, like a lot of near death situations. But of of course, uh, this doesn't necessarily disprove this because when it eventually happens, we wouldn't know. Still. But yeah, it's it's a worth worth sort of worth noticing the um, utility of the, the the personal philosophy here is uh, coming to terms with accepting the fact that like as a philosopher like the the fourth category uh, between madman liar poet philosopher the fourth poet here uh, the fourth part the fourth part here the fourth fourth interpretation is is shown by things like this where. Where we re, uh, where we reflect on what it means to what it means to be mortal, uh, and what it means to sort of not know when you will leave this world. Like we plan for things to happen next week, and this is something that's gone through. Like I didn't mention it earlier when I read it in the other surahs. Like we plan for the future, and we make these grand goals. But I might like I, I'm going to to work. Like I, I'm midway through reading the Quran. I'm going to work. I mean, I'm slightly more. Oh, no, actually, barely, barely midway still. I'm going slower more recently. Like halfway through, uh, planning to finish this, posting a video every other day. But I'm going to go to uh, to work to do maths, uh, maths problems uh, later today, and um, and I might get hit by a truck while out walking. While uh, my my train might derail and I might drown in the fjords. Uh, there are so many things that might happen that suddenly might end uh, in my life. And I'm not prepared for it. I'm sort of uh, coming to terms with your own mortality, in a sense, by sort of realizing that the hour will 
will take us all by surprise. That is, I think, uh, yeah, I think valuable. It's it's almost like to be or not to be. Um, obviously, that I would also argue is not just poetic but philosophical. Uh, yeah, I like that. I like I like the sort of memory of of when we will die. Memento mori. A reminder that everything will come to an end in a way yeah if we take if we if i cut out all of the all of the things i don't like from the quran i'll be left with a, some very nice uh, beautiful poetic personal philosophy uh, but also maybe only one chapter <laughs> Only one surah <laughs> like this made from all of the other ones. A Frank Frankenstein's monster of all of the Andy's monster. That's what we'll call it. Other messengers had already been ridiculed before you, O prophet, but those who mocked them were overtaken by what they used to ridicule. Interesting. Ask them, O prophet, who can defend you by day or by night against the most compassionate? Will they turn away from the remembrance of their Lord? Yes. We, we already have. Uh, who can defend you by day or night against the most compassionate? Who can defend you against the most compassionate? Well, the most compassionate. Presumably, his own compassion will defend us. His own nature will defend us. Or indeed, his, uh, or indeed, this is just a lie. Maybe he's not the most compassionate. Because I've met much more compassionate human beings than... Like, the most compassionate human beings do not need me to defend... But maybe it maybe like one that they say most compassionate, they don't mean compared to other beings who are compassionate. They only mean compared to God. And because there is only one God, clearly he's both the most and the least compassionate. He's all of the compa he's all of the spectrum. Uh, that makes sense now, actually. Ah, uh, th then it makes sense. Or do they have gods other than us that can protect them? They cannot even protect themselves, nor will they be aided against us. Okay. Well, it, actually, can't we say the same thing about about God? Like, I made, um, what's it? And sometime in May, it's Draw Muhammad Day. I can do it, like, quickly now. If you want to do, like... Uh, I don't know how offensive this is going to be, but, like... I don't know. I can look at the... This is my stick, man, and it says the prophet underneath it. Um, it's just a stick man, no other symbolism, not, not as creative as Yulon's Possum's, uh, bomb turban, not as, uh, as fascinating as, uh, as Hebdo's very, very edgy comics. No, this is, but it's sort of, God cannot, like the God of the Quran cannot simply defend himself against my ridicule he needs humans to do it god is less powerful than humans because god makes humans do all of his dirty work unless of course when he acts by nature in which case he's weirdly capricious and doesn't seem to care about the things he says he cares about uh so <sighs> ditto honestly yeah this is the liar stating the liar of the of the four categories in fact, we have allowed enjoyment for these Meccans and their forefathers for such a long time that they took it for granted. Do they not see we gradually reduce their land from its borders? Is it they who will then prevail? Well, if the, if you're reducing their borders, no, probably not. But it's like, does, does this not happen to somebody else? Is this not simply a force of nature? Perhaps we are, again, going back to the same sort of interesting personal philosophy. Everything ends. Not just your life, not just the suddenness of your own life, but like empires and civilizations end. And we t take it for granted. We take all of the good things in our lives for granted, but they're not. They're, they are fleeting. We, we uh, yeah, understanding that all things must end. Is it then they who will prevail? No, that is it's good, good philosophy. Say, O prophet, I warn you only by revelation, but the deaf cannot hear the call when they are warned. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like presenting 
Like this is a liar again, because the deaf cannot hear the call on their own, right? It's a rhetorical device. Because other people who would reject the call when they are warned are people who don't believe it. People who think you're stupid. People who are critically thinking. Like if, if this was, but the smart cannot hear, uh, hear your, do not believe your delusions, right? If you phrase it like that, like what I'm telling you, change the way you phrase it. Change the way you phrase it to see the alternate point of view. Uh, and yeah, the, I'm sure that it, you believe that I'm being willfully willfully ignorant, willfully intentionally avoiding listening to the, the concepts being shown to me. Um, but it's in the same way, I feel like you're not engaging your own critical reasoning. And that's the flip side here is f f to you, I seem like a deaf person complaining that you haven't shouted loud enough in my ear. But to me, you seem like a blind person telling me you can see telling me to actually avoid that avoid that cliff over there when there's no cliff over there like a blind person telling me that there's a danger i must avoid that they can see in the future but i, I can't see it because i'm the one who's blind like it goes both ways i feel you feel i'm blind well i feel you're blind good on you they were touched by even a breath breath of your lord's breath I'll show you my breath I will uh, if they were touched by even a breath of your lord's statement lord's torment they would certainly cry woe to us we have really been wrongdoers we set up the scales of justice for the day of judgment so no soul will be wronged in the least <laughs> by my judgment by the way and this is we set up the scales and I'm the one who gets to decide how the scales should be set up. And I'm like, you will not be wronged according to my basis. Like, I will not wrong you. You can trust that I will not wrong you because I am the one who gets to decide what it means to wrong you. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Winning by definition. Well done. Like the, we've had tyrants before. We've had, we'd ha we've had Nazis. We've had crazy people. Like, I know you're not supposed to say that on YouTube videos, but like we've had evil tyrants in our lives oppressing us and they also said the same things like well you're being judged correctly because you're jewish right because you're jewish we're going to send you to these camps right or because you're a kulak because you were you were a bourgeoisie you made too much money in the past you oppressed people you're going to the gulag oh because this and that you know, we're judging you according to these standards which we tell you are actually fair and just standards uh, and that's how you know that they're fair and just that no no like there were no more fair and just standards in their lives it's 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 a might makes right argument because god is mighty we should serve him uh. presumably also why uh, muslims are compelled to follow the laws uh, of the country in which they live because they're they're the mighty rule it's a might makes right argument that should have been the title oh i forgot that uh, we set up the scales of justice for the day of judgment, so no soul, yeah. Uh, and even, so no soul will be wronged in the least. And even if a deed is the weight of a mustard seed, we will bring it forth. And sufficient are we as a vigilant reckoner. Sufficient are we as a vigilant reckoner. Indeed, we granted Moses and Aaron the decisive authority, a light and a reminder for the righteous who are in awe of their Lord without seeing him and are fearful of the hour. As much in private. Okay, I see. Because it's like, who have faith, who see, like, who are in awe of their Lord without proof, because all of the people who ask for proof, oh, they'll get it, they'll get it in the end, they'll get it when they're punished. <coughs> and they wouldn't believe even if they had proof, so why are we going to give them proof? Because they wouldn't believe even if they had it. It's like, well, at least you'd have a point. At least if you'd been trying constantly to give us proof and you're constantly giving us proof and you're not just giving us words and pretending like words aren't cheap. It... Oh, tragic. But yeah, there is... Well, I've, I've talked about the, the necessity of doing... Of, of the usefulness of... Uh, for people who have primitive moral philosophies who don't know how to think about goodness for its own sake um 
how they sort of use uh, use this idea of God seeing everything and to be good in private. Whereas moral secular people tend to sort of humanists tend to just sort of I want to be a good person. That's why I do good to be a good person. And this Quran is a blessed reminder, which we have revealed. Will you pagans then deny it? Yep, hundred percent, very easily. Um, like it, it doesn't, it doesn't stall me at all to be accused. And indeed, we have granted Abraham sound judgment early on, for we knew him well to be worthy of it. <laughs> we give him sound judgment as proven. <laughs> Oh, you should trust Abraham and Aaron and Moses because we gave them sound judgment. So you should trust them when they tell us, tell you that we are the ones we say we are. It's, it is really a godforsaken circular nonsense. We gave, we knew him to be worthy of sound judgment. Well, like the, the whole, like the premise of the point, the book the point it's trying to get across is that these people were of sound judgment and the argument for believing this is god knew they were worthy of sound judgment presumably because they believed in god in the way that those books says it's yeah liar is the word we're getting for it. okay this is the the trick of a sophist of a rhetorician trying to make it seem like there's only one way of thinking Remember when he questioned his father and his people, what are these statues to which you are so devoted? Yeah. And like, why flip the same question? Why is this book? What is this book to which you are so devoted? What is this stick figure? Like, what is this character to which you are so devoted? Why is that so much more important than like, why does it matter when Abraham used these arguments against his father, but not when his father used them against him, or why I used them against uh, you. They replied, we found our forefathers worshipping them. Hmm. Which is, by the way, an argument from this book constantly. Like, oh, it's from the scriptures. Oh, it's referencing, it's a reminder, it's a continuation, it's a reminder. It's our forefathers worship them. That's the argument you're presenting to me in this chapter is our forefathers. We found our forefathers worshiping them. This is a reminder of what came before. This is just a continuation. Oh, this is just what all the prophets. Oh, listen to those who have knowledge of the scriptures. Like our forefathers? Why, why does it only work? For one argument and not the other. Why does it, Why do you reject all other gods but not your own? Why do you not use the same arguments given to you from both the Quran and from your own reason against all other gods, against the one you already believe in? Are you? Why do you not use your reason? It's so frustrating to me to see people who are otherwise intelligent human beings who are capable of doing like being communicating me and you know, showing me oh they understand things they've read things they can comprehend like like we had a, a fascinating discussion about uh, mathematics one of the earlier earlier uh, discussions i had about this and uh and it's sort of as soon as we go into religion it's like ah oh, well this is here's my argument and it's like so so impressively weak compared to their otherwise ability to reason. And and this is like one of the best ways of showing it is like when when in context, like what about, why do you reject other gods? Why don't you use those arguments against yourself? That That's the, the big, the big test. For us atheists, all of the statements being used by Muhammad here to criticize these pagans, I go, well, if you change them very slightly by not like you don't even sometimes you can just use the exact wording. Sometimes it's like very specifically referencing like t taking others to be equal to God. But like if you can just change the concept a little bit and be like, well, why shouldn't there be others? What do you mean by God? Like all of these. Yeah. Use the arguments given to you here against um against the pagans and use them against your own monotheism and uh, and that's what i don't think your religion can survive i don't think any religion can survive it but it's more shocking to me 
to see the arguments being written out in the book about itself. Like, it's just, it's almost offensive. Like, it's almost like it's taunting me with this sort of reminder, being like, I can tell, like, it's almost like I'm, uh, it's almost like Satan literally wrote it. And like, God is sitting on my shoulder and he's reading it and he's like, he's taunting me. Like, that's, like, I'm putting myself in, in God's shoes here for a moment. And it's like, it feels like you're, I'm reading the word of, of Satan saying, well, not only can I make them listen and believe that I am God, I can do it while giving them all of the reasons why they shouldn't listen and believe to me as God. That's what it feels like I'm reading here. It feels like I'm reading a list, like, somebody, somebody so proud of their ability to manipulate people, whether it's mortal or divine or whatever magical or real and it's somebody like giving all of these arguments but then again i know from from reality sorry i know from the rest of my life that that's not what's happening obviously the people believe these things people are convinced of their own beliefs um the reason like what's the phrase why people believe weird things well smart people believe weird things because the smarter they are the better they are at rationalizing their mistakes uh, so I, I do genuine. I understand that people genuinely believe this, and it's not not just written by a madman, or like a mad liar trying to manipulate everyone. But it's it, it really definitely feels like it. Uh, it has these sort of weird hallmarks of this is the argument that you already gave for your own position, but worded differently, and we're supposed to not realize that. He responded, so by we found our forefathers worshiping them. And so Abraham responded, indeed, you and your forefathers have been clearly astray. They asked, have you come to us with the truth or is this a joke? <laughs> yes, that's how, that's how I feel. <laughs> he replied, in fact, your Lord is the Lord of the heavens and the earth who created them both. And to that I bear witness. Trust me. Oh my goodness. Words are cheap, Abraham. Your Lord is Satan. And to that I bear witness. Your Lord is Iblis. This is a delusion written by Iblis. And your Lord wants you to reject him. And to that I bear witness. Did you? Were you persuaded when I said that? Why, why do you not react? Oh, are you going to react? Exactly like Abraham's forefathers. Are you not going to accept that I'm obviously telling the truth? Because how could I lie about God? Like, engage your critical thinking. Of course words are cheap. This isn't, like, this shouldn't be convinced. This should be the opposite of convincing. This is like the bit in uh, the Joseph Smith Mormon story where he's like, well, actually, God was so upset at me for share for, like, for uh, whatever the wife of whoever, uh, look look at the South Park summary if you want to. Like he, Joseph Smith, God was upset with me, so he's going to give me the same story but with slight variations. And like that's that's the whole test. That's you failing the test. And it's sort of here the same thing. Uh, trust me because trust me, bro. Then he said to himself, "By God, I will surely plot against your idols after you have turned your backs and gone away." <laughs> Oh, goodness. So he smashed them into pieces, except the biggest of them, so they might turn to it for answers. So Abraham threw a hissy fit. <sighs> what if I did that? What if I did that to the crop and uh, smashed your idols to pieces and burned it? Burned your idols too, not just my own, not just my own property in my own backyard, but burned, took your property and destroyed it. If I treated you the way Abraham treated his forefathers, how do you think that would go down, buddy? Such a, hip such a hypocritical religion. Really? I thought I was going to use the whole... Uh, yeah, liar, madman, liar, prophet, uh, poet, philosopher uh, thing. 
I, I'm probably going to play with that one. I'm going to write it down just so I remember because that's a, that's a poem unto itself. Madman, lawyer, poet, philosopher. Prophet? Question mark. <clears throat> they protested. Who dared do this to our gods? It must be an evildoer. Yeah, that's exactly what you'd say. Some of, some said we heard a young man called Abraham speaking ill of them. Yeah, the, hi. <laughs> they demanded bring him before the eyes of the people so they may witness his trial. They asked, "Was it you who did this to our gods, O Abraham?" He replied sarcastically, no, this one, the biggest of them, did it. So ask them if they can talk. And now I'm feeling hip with hip with Abraham. Uh, uh, so they came back to their senses, saying to one another, you yourselves are truly the wrong to me. Instead of dealing with it, instead of dealing with the argument, dealing with the reasoning, dealing with the problem, dealing with the ethics of the situation, dealing with the problem of rebelling against religion, dealing with religious tolerance and the religious tolerance expected of Muslims by other pagans, by or sorry, by other religious people, I, instead of dealing with any of it, it's like, well, Abraham made a sick quip, yo, and then they all came to their senses. <sighs> We're talking about write one surah like this. Th actually, no, it's, it's starting to seem like it would be easier and easier because literally all you need to do is reiterate constantly. Like it, it's more, it's more like a shower conversation. You know, sometimes after you've had a had a discussion with somebody and like you you feel so frustrated you couldn't didn't know what to say, and in the shower like you're thinking about it and something. I should have just said this. That's what this feels like. It feels like uh, like. It feels like it's not actually an interaction happening between real people. It's an interaction happening entirely in your own mind where you can imagine yourself and your position being like having such great comebacks and being so witty and, and good at speaking that everyone suddenly realizes the truth. That's not how reality works. Come on. We all know this. We all know this. We all know that I've e like even if you're surrounded by people who disagree with you and you make the best argument, they won't suddenly go oh actually that was right they'll go home and then months later they'll go oh maybe he had a point like they'll think they will process information slightly differently um but yeah uh, i like i like the snark though i do really enjoy the snark i mean it's one thing to actually have have the snarky bastard like literally genuinely honestly intentionally snarky that's a, i approve i approve a lot uh, much better, better even, like, usually I approve the Hellfire Sermons, but this, this mockery of differing beliefs, this mockery of the past, mwah, it's, it's like, it's like Muhammad actually decided to, at a certain point in his life, be like, you know what, there, where I'm being mocked all of the time, they're making these sarcastic comments, like, is he God, does he know what he's talking about, I can do that too. No, this one, the biggest of them, that's who did it. Like, I like that. It seems like maybe this is like a mellowing out. Maybe Muhammad is realizing, you know what? Mock me all you like. I can mock you straight back. Uh, that's a good thing. I, I mean, that's a good thing. Abraham mocks his neighbors. I, maybe that should be the title. But yeah, they came to their senses. Of course they did. Saying to one another, you yourselves are truly the wrongdoers. Then they quickly regressed to their original mindset, arguing, you already know that these those idols cannot talk. What? So they didn't. So this is, yeah, this is exactly what I thought. It's like they would have came to their senses, but then they just regressed. Um, you know, already know these idols cannot talk. He rebuked them. Do you then worship instead of God? What can neither benefit you nor harm you in any way? Like, does God talk? Like, this seems like a good argument. Like, I'm I'm more and more convinced that Abraham was just an atheist and just didn't want to kill his child. He's like, just clearly there cannot be any God because any God worthy of worship would not make me kill my own child. But he was surrounded by these complete and utter mindless retards who couldn't imagine reality, who couldn't bear to think of things without having this certainty to grapple onto this cliff to cling onto uh, uh, as they 
plummet into the depths of their own ignorance. Uh, but instead, he um, and instead he's he's been made to speak in behalf of all of the religions simply for being willing to reject them all by the one who rejected all of the pagan. Like it seems very much maybe that is what it means to believe in the one true the one true God to reject all gods to reject divinity uh, as an explanation for natural phenomena whatsoever hmm. so i'll do i'll do what the muslims do where the muslims say that all of these people of the past they actually believed as we do and we're just following uh, following the same God and it feels like the same here Abraham believed just as I do Abraham was just as much as an atheist as I was but uh, pushed into it by the wedding limb but yeah no what can neither benefit nor harm you in any way like uh, to be fair though what they've shown so far is only that they cannot talk not that they can neither benefit uh, or harm them in any way nor indeed has it been shown that Allah can or God in any way can Shame on you and whatever you worship instead of God. Do you not have any sense? They concluded, burn him up to avenge our gods if you must act. We ordered, O oh fire, be cool and safe for Abraham. It is reported in a hadith collected by Bukhari that Abraham said, While being thrown into the fire, God alone is sufficient as an aid for us. He is the best protector. Interesting. interesting uh, because as as you know if you've come this far in my readings you probably are aware of that like i usually try and sort of imagine this scenario the the opposite scenario here and it's like what would abraham have done like is it a walking on hot coals scenario where he just sort of shows that your own faith that's all you need you need, just need to trust yourself and you can do it. They had sought to harm him, but we had made them the worst losers. Then we delivered to him then we delivered him along with Lot to the land we had showered with blessings for all people. Babel, Iraq to Jerusalem. Okay. We blessed him with Isaac as a son and Jacob as a grandson, as uh, uh, as an additional favour, making all of them righteous. We also made them leaders, guiding by our command, and inspired them to do good deeds. Establish prayer, prayer, and I can say uh, uh, <laughs> prayer, and pay alms tax. They were devoted to our worship. And to Lot we gave wisdom and knowledge, and delivered him from the society engrossed in shameful practices. They were certainly an evil, rebellious people. <sighs> We also made them leaders. We blessed them. So we protected them and we gave them blessings. And obviously none of this would have happened if I didn't exist. Like what about all the other people who rejected their parents' idols? Were they also made strong and powerful? What about all the atheists? Were they also made strong and powerful? Those who did not waste their time praying five times a day not eating specific types of meat because ew icky and like weird puritanical rituals about when to clean yourself like, people who actually pragmatically go through life do tend to have better lives may become leaders and have prosperity more so than the people who obsess over ritual and and right but yeah the evil rebellious people those are the, 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 those by the way are the people who were blessed to the land we had showered with blessings for all people so delivered him from the society engrossed in shameful practices which was also the one they had gone to along with lot to the land we had showered or maybe that's where they came from who knows we admitted him into our mercy for he was truly one of the righteous and remember, when Noah had cried out to us earlier, 
We So we responded to him and delivered him and his family from the greatest distress. I <laughs> said, deliver us from his family. Delivered him and his family. And, uh, <laughs> oh, I see. I was like, what? The greatest distress was his believers. No, no, the the believers in his family. Those are the people who are counted as the actual family, uh, the people who believed as they do. Oh goodness, we made him prevail over those who had rejected our signs. They were truly an evil people, so we drowned them all. <laughs> Uh, then remember when David and Solomon passed judgment regarding the crops ruined at night by someone's sheep and we were witness to their judgment. We guided young Solomon to a fairer settlement woman and granted each of them wisdom and knowledge. Uh, I don't really, I mean, <sighs> I don't necessarily want to. This is like why I don't, I'm not reading the Bible, but, um, but let's read it. Man's flock of sheep strayed into another man's vineyard, eating and destroying all his produce. When the two men came to David for judgment, he ruled that the shepherd must give his animals to the vineyard owner in compensation for the damage. On their way out, the two men met young Solomon and the shepherd complained to him. Solomon discussed the case with his father and suggested that the sheep should be kept with a man who lost his produce so he may benefit from their milk and wool, while the shepherd worked on the farm to restore it to its original state. Eventually, the farmer would take back his farm in perfect condition. The sheep would be returned to the shepherd. David was impressed by his son's insight and approved his fair judgment. So we guided young son. Like, God takes a lot of credit for all of the goodness of humans do and none of the credit for all of the evil humans do. Like, I mean, sometimes in the, the Quran, it's like, well, he made us this way, so he made us to be it like... Everything like it's phrased in a logically way from believing God. I, but again, it makes more sense to me as an atheist book. It makes more sense to me as Muhammad, like trying to give people these sort of basic thought principles. It's like he's almost challenging you, like a trolling people, and to convince people to sort of see. Look, I'm giving you all of the tools you need to criticize your own beliefs. But alas, uh, but alas, if you, as long as you insist that you're speaking the truth enough times, people will believe you. They will just stop, stop using their brains at a certain point. We taught him the art of making body armor to protect you in battle. Will you then be grateful? <laughs> Did you teach him that? <laughs> because anything that, well, I guess if anything that humans discovered, that was God teaching us. And that's the thing, right? As nature makes a lot of sense. As you're interacting with nature makes a lot of sense. As a metaphor for a non-thinking, non-feeling, non-caring being makes a lot of sense. As soon as you go and you're going to be resurrected when you die and you will be judged for your sins. That only makes sense if you're speaking to a bunch of psychopaths and you think you can genuinely convince them. Uh, that God will punish them. I guess if God, if you are speaking to a bunch of psychopaths, you will likely only convince them that God is a psychopath, which makes sense then, I guess, because uh, then, yeah, maybe that's the usefulness. Oppressing the, the evil people in our society, making them believe that there really is a God, and they because then they will make God in their own image, just as everyone else does. And uh, and the most evil people will have the most evil version of God. That makes sense. And the most chill people will have the most chill version of God. Makes a lot of sense. Uh, so, and to Solomon we subjugated the raging winds, blowing by his command to the land, land we had showered with blessings. It is we who know everything. And we subjected some jinn that dived for him and performed other duties. It is we who kept them in check. Some devils that dived to bring him pearls. <laughs> okay, we're looking that up. I haven't been looking things up as often lately because I've had enough to say without it. But we're really definitely looking. Some jinn who dove, went pearl diving for him. 
Please tell me there's some. Please tell me there's something more here. From Jim. Okay, so. CF34. Okay, so there's something later. I don't really like when it's referencing things that come later because I'm reading it in order. So 34, 12, 13. What? Eighty two. Made some of the gin subservient to Typhoon and other works besides CF thirty four twelve thirteen, which is I don't understand what it's getting at. Because then it's just saying the 1213 note. And we subjected the wind for Solomon. Its outward journey took a month and its return journey likewise. We made a mountain of fountain of molten brass flow for him, and some of the jinn worked under his control with the Lord's permission. One of them deviated from our command, and we let him taste the suffering of the blazing flame. So maybe that's like the answer to sort of the paganism uh, of the area, is to do like, well, there's no one else but God. The whole of nature is its whole, like the whole, it's a whole. It's all encompassing, all touching, all interacting with each other. It makes sense to think of the universe like uh, this pantheistic sense. If you do have a very limited understanding of physics, of course, it's more helpful to to think of it as um, if you're if you're bad at maths, thinking about things in terms of gods and devils and might be easier. Um, in terms of stories instead of numbers but um but obviously uh it's like did did he really did, did the jinns stop existing can you can you can you still find me some jinns are they still around oh no, no only god will only use them like that would be proof of the supernatural you must understand like at this point any any kind of evidence of what these magical creatures uh, would be uh, quite useful. But of course, they only existed before we had the capacity to gather loads of evidence. Um, so to be, uh, it would be funny. I mean, I expect that in reality, it's it's either a metaphor for nature, like I was thinking like these uh, jinns are representatives of like the tides and these ocean currents. Like you can have cycles in nature that are sort of gradually tending towards where... Um, new things for instance where maybe temperature changes uh, led there to be a flood of meltwater with, which was filled with loads of healthy minerals which made it so that uh, the clams they are diving for pearls like the clams produced more uh, bigger pearls or nicer pearls or more pearls or just f fed the clams in general so in that sense you sort of have the gins uh, being the silt that is being flooded, uh, dragged out from the river. And that, that, that is like a useful way of thinking of jinn. Or the alternate way is that jinn is speaking about uh, some people, some powerful people who were enslaved in some kind of way. Or some people that they wanted to be racists about. Some people who aren't real people, right? Uh, and they weren't like the marked cursed by god uh, but of course there are terms for slaves so maybe well i mean human that would be owning real people which they also did everyone did at this time let's not be let's be fair this isn't uh i don't like judging people in the past by our standards i like sort of showing that they were not like this is this from the context like this is a, a leap forward it is a good progressive moral step most of it at least some of well some of it is obviously a little bit edgy even at the time or some some of it is exactly what you'd expect for the time but compared to the time it seems like oh they actually made a step in the right direction they made a step towards uh, goodness it's just it's not saying it's the final step is really tr really triggering uh, both my critical thinking ability and my moral sense. It's like, 
critical thinking ability rejects the idea that there can ever be like a final step that you can ever have this certain knowledge and my moral sense because we have made moral progress since this point uh, so it's sort of just depressing <sighs> hopefully less less drilling noises so where were we yeah we were uh Teaching Solomon about body armor, clothes, justice, diving for pearls. <sighs> and remember, when Job, Job cried out to his Lord, I have been touched with adversity and you are the most merciful of the merciful. Yeah, story of Job. Very good story. Also very good because... Uh, it rejects all of the uh, traditional theological arguments uh, in favor of natural e or in defense of natural evil. The, st the story of Job really, really is in the same vein of this. Like this is very much uh, the Quran, very much uh, following in the tradition of the story of Job because the story of Job's argument is God is mighty and we are weak. Who are we to question or even criticize God's God's grace? Um, God is most merciful except for all of the human beings who are more merciful I suppose God, God has to be most merciful because he can see all of the things that human beings can't see so maybe he is the most merciful because he has more evidence of our evil than anyone else he can see into our mind imagine how horrifying that would be actually uh, to actually know the darkness in uh, everyone's hearts at all times which is why thought crime should be permitted but anyway uh, i get yeah but that makes sense if god is compassionate real massive diversion there so he answered his prayer and removed his adversity and gave him back his family twice as many as a mercy from us and lessened from the devoted worship he gave him back his family twice this is one of the grotesquest things about the story of job is <laughs> that like god goes well you passed your test now i'm going to give you new new wife and new children like it's one thing that your ex left you and like you didn't god kills some of job's children i i, I think some of them just leave of their own accord i don't remember exactly at this point but God is quite cruel and then he sort of just replaces them as if as if we're things like I mean sure I guess it makes sense for God who is so far beyond us to not understand it's like uh, it's like we're trying to give ants something they would like and we accidentally kit flooded half of the ant colony and we're like I get and then, then I gave you loads of food so that you could multiply and be twice as many I gave you a bigger ant colony as like it carries the same sort of uh uh, <laughs> lack of empathy honestly uh gave him back to a lesson from us and the lesson for the do you mean and as a lesson for the diverse because that's typically how that's been phrased um and remember ishmael enoch and zulkifl scholars in disagreement as whether zulkifl was a prophet or just a righteous man those who maintain he was a prophet identify him with the various biblical prophets as, as, uh, such as Ezekiel, Isaiah, and Obadiah. Interesting. I'm, I'm more curious, like, I understand the sort of, the, well, I empathize with the need to sort of uh, tie your own mythology into the previous mythology after all that's like just what the romans did with with every mythology they conquered uh but you in the context of the mythology uh, the mythology you've created like there should have been prophets before uh our records of them right the, just because like presumably god interacted with humanity before even people wrote down things when we were like less even more primitive more tribal like presumably there were prophets whose word uh, words were transmitted purely orally because a lot of the prophets of the bible were transmitted purely orally but i mean i guess maybe there's a problem with that too because then you sort of have to be more open and accepting of other cultures whereas you can't just sort of deny every other culture for being pagan 
Uh, we admitted them into our mercy. But that said, they wouldn't just deny. If, if any other, like, if you find a religion, like, maybe there is an Aboriginal religion in, in, like, Australia or something, where they, and they had, like, one god, then I, th I would expect most of the monotheistic religions to jump on it and be like, see, our... Our God interacted with everyone at all time, points in time. We just forgotten, and not everyone remembered, and not everyone was accepting, and blah blah blah. Uh, but yeah, presumably all of the civilizations that survived should have prophets, uh, because if not, God would simply do have destroyed them, right? Wasn't that the proof? Um, but they were all steadfast. They were all patient. They were all stubborn. We admitted them into our mercy, for they were truly of the righteous. And remember when the man of the whale stormed off from his city in a rage, thinking we would not restrain him, or thinking we will let him get away with it. Jonah had been met with denial for many years, when he sensed the coming of God's torment, he abandoned his city without God's permission. Eventually his people repented before the coming of the torment, and God accepted their repentance. See 1098. Whereas Jonah ended up in the belly of the whale. See 30. Oh, that's going to be later. Okay, but let's... Briefly check Jonah, because I remember we did it. 1098. 98. If a single town had believed and benefited from its belief, only Jonah's people did so, and when they believed, we relieved them of punishment and the disgrace. Okay, so I guess maybe that's an answer to the thing I just said. Um, where it's like, most societies didn't believe, and so we destroyed them all wholesale. Uh, except the ones you didn't. Uh, then in the veils of darkness, he cried out, there is no God worthy of worship except you. Glory be to you. I have certainly done wrong. Darkness of the night, the sea, the belly of the whale. Yeah. The three veils. So we answered his prayer and rescued him from anguish. And so do we save the true believers. I mean, it is a good metaphor, I guess. Uh, well, I don't know. Actually, honestly, I'm not clear what the metaphor is. Like, what is this weird faithful thing? You're fleeing from God and then you end up it's like these weird, um, like the story of King Oedipus, this sort of, uh, you can't cheat faith, so why even try? It's the same sort of element of, uh, yeah, faith, actually, in, in like Norse and, um, and Greek mythology. This concept of faith very much encapsulates quite a lot of God's function as a sort of um, philosophical concept. It's a similar idea of sort of, you have to accept uh like be serene be accepting of your state and the reality and like you will die you your your days will come to an end you can't escape the, the fury of nature and trying will just lead you to another part of the fury and like if you, if you are fated to do something that's what's going to happen and if you know what your faith is that wouldn't change anything like you think like one of the things we believe is we we think that if we knew our futures and we knew our fates we would change we could change them um but it's um, it sort of implies that no, if we could know our, our fates, we couldn't change them, uh, or if our attempts to change them would simply falter. So I, it's sort of that kind of metaphor. It seems to me. I'm guessing that's what this one is. It's sort of the, the idea of the, the veils of darkness being the boat, the the the, the whale, and the darkness of night. It's sort of yeah. I guess when. <laughs> I guess maybe that's when you you've given up all hope you've been swallowed up by the whole world because obviously it's a metaphor people don't survive inside whales at least not for very long um maybe you survive now because you drown right you drown and be crushed hmm. and remember when zachariah cried out loud to his lord cried out to his lord my lord do not leave me childless though you are the best of successes meaning you will be there for eternity and after all pass away okay i see being the best here like the most eternal successor even though you will always succeed me you will always succeed everything i do even though i understand that you will always be here even though i perish I want there to be something else. I want there to be a person I can talk to, a, a being, a human, not just nature, not just an and like, not just the face of God and the winds and my imagination imposed upon uh, my anthropomorphizing of reality. I want a, an an anthro an anthro 
What what's what would be the word? An anthrope, <laughs> a human being, a, and a person, uh, someone to um, to in, engage with. So he answered his prayer, granting him John, and made his wife fertile. Presumably not in that order. Indeed, they used to race in doing good and call upon us with hope and fear, totally humbling themselves before us. And remember, the one who guarded her chastity, so he breathed into her through our angel Gabriel, making her a son, her and her son a sign for all people. Breathed into the sleeves of Mary's garment, so she conceived him. <laughs> Again, this is like really feels like <laughs> breathed into the sleeves. This really feels like a metaphor for rape, honestly. Like it really feels like it. And sure, in this sort of context of of um, purpose, of sort of ascribing a purpose and meaning to reality, to, to nature, uh, the idea of having it sort of that even even a rapist who, who we would consider evil can sort of be an angel in, in God's God's care. They can be people who do what God wants them to do, even like without understanding, like the like the man who Moses in the uh, I don't remember what it was, was it sort of 19, 18 it was um, where like Moses, uh, one of the most offensive things I've ever read, uh, period, honestly, but it's specifically there being about, well, we killed this man and my justification was he, he was going to tempt his family with disbelief and and sort of even a person as evil as this or as evil as somebody who, who presumably raped Mary could be um, uh, could sort of be an angel of God uh, in an angel of this sort of natural world uh, and uh, yeah understanding that goodness might come from evil is a useful thing and using this language being able to use language like this it's one of the fascinating things here is I, I complained so far today a lot about the use of language or the sort of the problems of um, of getting stuck in how you phrase things but it is also very useful like to me right now reading things like this and sort of the trick of doing the other way around like the thing I'm showing you how to do is how to read all of these things positively that that are written as positively and read them interpret them as negatively interpret them in the flip side but on the flip side here you can I can then use the same trick the same trick I'm sort of practicing here uh, the other way around and ask myself are there situations in my life where I have people and actions and, and experiences that I would describe as evil that I can sort of flip around and see where is the goodness in it where is the divinity in this where is the sort of this purpose and meaning to the things uh, that I struggle to accept but yeah that's that's nice That's nice. Our prophets, indeed, this religion of yours is only one, and I am your Lord. So worship is the only one, I presume they mean. And I am your Lord, so worship me alone. Because if you read this in English, you interpret, this religion of yours is only one. Only one of many, right? You, my interpretation was immediately that this is a very open and accepting phrase. What probably isn't being interpreted as that. Yet the people have divided it into sects, but to us they will all return. Oh, it is kind of, it is kind of open, but to us they will all return. I mean, it's almost open. Like the, this idea that all religions are actually part of this one religion is a very open and uh, inclusive way of thinking about the world. Uh, but of course, can't help it, can't help but say, but this is the true one. This is the accurate one. All of the other ones are wrong. They're all divided. We're all we're all the same religion, and we're all divided into sects. But this sect, this is the right one. Flip it around. Imagine that it's true that they're all the religions are referring to the one. But they're all different interpretations, different visions, this different parts of a whole, which is too big for any one religion to comprehend, for any one being to comprehend. It is so much. It's so such a lacking theology to imagine that not only like sure you can believe that there is a God, but to believe that you know the whole of the mind of God, you know exactly what he wants. That is to me tragic. Whoever does good and is a believer will never be denied the reward for their striving. 
for we are recording it all. To be fair though, like it just implied that everyone, everyone is a believer. So, I mean, that maybe that justifies all of the other ones and the sort of presuppositionalist nonsense. It is impossible for a society which we have destroyed to ever rise again. <laughs> okay. Until after Gog and Magog have broken loose from the barrier, swarming down every hill. Yeah, I, I remember that. Uh, Gog and Magog, this, this dividing wall between two cruel pre peoples. Ushering in the true promise. Then behold, the disbelievers will stare in horror, crying, Oh, woe to us, we have been heedless of this. In fact, we have been wrongdoers. Believers will stare in horror. In fact, we have been wrongdoers. Yeah, it's such because this doesn't square with this whole people have divided in the sects idea. Well, it does square with the whole, but this is the true one. We are the right one. Certainly, you disbelievers and whatever you worship instead of Allah will be the fuel of hell. But if well, okay, ooh, I'm safe. The things I worship instead of God will be the fuel. But that's great because I don't worship things. I say that nothing should be worshipped. Uh, well, perfect. There will be no fuel for my fires. My washer will be heated by nothing. You are all bound to enter it. Had those idols been true gods, they would not have entered it. And they will be there forever. <laughs> had they been true gods it's a very nice tautology you've got there <laughs> like, well if they had been true gods then there wouldn't be a place for them to enter and then they wouldn't have entered it clever good good word trick in it they will groan and they and will not be able to hear surely for those for those surely those for whom we have destined for the finest reward will be kept far away from hell surely surely without doubt not even hearing the slightest hissing from it. And they will delight forever in what their souls desire. This is carrot and stick, very good. The supreme horror of that day will not disturb them, and the angels will greet them, saying, This is your day, which you have been promised. On that day we will roll up the heavens like a scroll of writings. Just as we produced the first creation, so shall we reproduce it. That is a promise binding on us. We truly uphold our promises. <laughs> I mean, this is why we like sort of uh, the, I mean, uh, not so much in the Quran, but I uh, like uh, the, from the context of uh, of the story of Noah and the sort of Christian story of Noah being like, well, we promise not to do it again. Ah, well, we promise not to do it. Like a lot of, it, God has lot, broken his promises a lot of times. Of course, the, the implication of the Quran is that no, no, we broke our promises to God or the Jews or the like the people of God broke uh, their promises to God. It's not, God didn't break his promise. God never broke his promise. Uh -huh. Never, ever did God do anything bad, ever, ever. That's impossible to even think. Surely, following the heavenly record, we decreed in the scriptures, my righteous servants shall inherit the land. Yeah. Okay. Surely this Quran is sufficient as a reminder for those devoted to worship. Yeah. Very good statement because yes, exactly. It is sufficient for those who already believe. Um, and uh, like it, it is surprising to me that like Jews and Christians don't flock more and more to these kinds of uh, new gospels, uh, these new new religious texts, uh, because it seems to me that just having more reminders, more sort of proofs would just sort of go, go well into this uh, interpretation, well into this sort of monotheistic tyranny. We have sent you, O prophet, but for me, obviously, if you're not already devoted to worship, it, it's completely unconvincing. It's not even completely, it's not just, it's not just wrong. It's offensively wrong. It's offensively stupid. It's crazy. It's insane to me that to anyone who doesn't take it as true, that this should be taken as true. That this, these kinds of statement, this kinds of phrasing isn't immediately spotted for our rhetorical twaddle. But oh well, we have sent you a prophet as a, only as a mercy for the whole world, for only the parts of the world, world which are already believed, though, as we've already 
made clear. Say, what has been revealed to me is this. Your God is only one God. Will you then submit? So back to the good part. Because this, um, when, it, when we were talking about Abraham, I, ha I sort of had these in inclinations that it's a sort of uh, atheistic attempt almost a sort of secular attempt and this sort of um, i did the same with muhammad like it almost feels like it's an intentional uh it almost feels like they were like look don't justify all of these evil things you're doing don't use god as an excuse to do these evil things god doesn't want you to do these evil things and like, well, there are so many gods. Which gods do you mean? And it's like, look, I'm, I'm saying there is only one God and he doesn't want you to do these things. Like it doesn't, even if they didn't believe it, it's sort of a useful rhetorical trick to, or a tool, a trick, yeah, a useful rhetorical trick to make people realize uh, the sort of why they shouldn't do the things they should and why they're sort of hiding behind. Like, it seems to me that Muhammad, in using... Uh, Muhammad and Abraham in using this sort of metaphor of God um, was more effective at getting people to reject the immoralities of the past than I will ever be by sitting here and telling you there is no God, there is no God, obviously all of this is nonsense. Uh, me, like, preaching nihilism, preaching nothing, giving you nothing to replace this warm, fuzzy feeling of certainty will not actually help but all of these people or this warm fuzzy justification of everything you did like if uh, if i am to say well all of the all of the uh, genital mutilation you've done whether female or male that it's all forgiven god is merciful and forgiven there is only one god you should he, he will forgive you for for all the evil things you've done in his name um as long as you repent and do good this is a much more effective tool at ridding people of delusions so to be very clear, what I'm seeing here is that between me and Muhammad, Muhammad would actually be capable of convincing uh, uh, pagans to stop things like sacrificing their children and sacrificing uh, the people they love and sort of doing cruel. And like, I, if I was sent to the Aztecs, I would just be executed, uh, sacrificed to Quetzalcoatl or whatever. Whereas Muhammad, it seems like, would have actually addressed them and sort of unified their gods and, and sort of given them a new framework to think of this is like the weird problem with me is like i'm i'm i can only destroy i'm only a doubter i'm only a critic i'm only like a skeptic i don't create a new thing i don't build a new place for you to house your thoughts a new framework for you to see reality all i do is i say this framework is insufficient and it should be to me and it should be insufficient to you too um so that's, yeah, it's, it's sort of a, a recognition of the utility of this, this kind of rhetoric, of this, what the thing, the divinity you believe in is not so disparate as you think it is. Uh, there is, there is a better system, a better way of thinking of it. And it is this monotheism. So again, as as we've noticed so many times it doesn't seem like muhammad is actually talking to me it seems like he's actually only talking to the people who um who do evil in in the name of the gods and pretend that their their gods want them to do it uh, it seems like muhammad is only talking to the people like the people who made me islamophobic like the people who do evil in the name of god People who made me an anti-theist. Uh, it seems like Muhammad was better at curing us of these people than I will ever be. But no, I won't submit. Even if you say there is only one God, because not my God. They turn away, then say, I have warned you all equally. I do not know if what you, have, you are threatened with is near or far. God surely knows what you say openly, whatever you hide. I do not know if this delay is possibly a test for you or an, an enjoyment for a while. In the end, the prophet said, My Lord, judge between us in truth. And our Lord is the most compassionate, whose help is sought against what you claim. I mean, this, again, like we just had a beautiful moment here. A beautiful moment where we actually go, 
this is actually just nice. Like oh, my introduction was just perfect and appropriate. And like, actually, I, I admit at least one thing. Muhammad was better than me. Well, at least one thing. And that is in persuading the persuading those who use who use God as a shield for criticism uh, against those people. Muhammad is clearly much better than me. I know we read it, and I'm going to read it again. If they turn away, then say, I have warned you all equally. I do not know if what you are threatened with is near or far. God surely knows what you say openly and whatever you hide. I do not know if this delay is possibly a test for you or an enjoyment for a while. In the end, my Lord, judge between us in truth. And our Lord is the most compassionate, whose help is sought against whatever you claim. Yeah, it's it's sort of my interpretation is that it's only God knows. I don't know why like it seems almost candid, almost honest from Muhammad here. Him saying to us, I don't know why you haven't been punished. I don't know why things are the way they are. Only God knows. And only and let him judge in truth. I seek, I pray for his guidance to let me see the truth. And that's a beautiful, poetic way to end. If only they hadn't included this little stupid note where he says, oh, and it's specifically referring to, uh, as a counter-argument to this ar idea that actually we need... Uh, this. It's a counter-argument to this idea of God having partners. No, it's a beautiful statement of the fragility and fallibility and simplicity and limit of our human minds to understand the incomprehensible, the, the things beyond us, our limited ability to understand our place in the world. An awe-inspiring, honestly, a, a brutal and bare reflection on what he feels, what it's like. That's what this is. Not some trite, argumentative essay because if it is a trite argumentative essay, it's shit. But if it's poetry, my God, is it beautiful. And with that, I will leave you till next time. See you then.